Moin Moin and welcome to Ralph's Photo Booth. Yeah, some weeks ago I was at uh, Olympus here in Hamburg and uh, I made the video of the OMD EM10. That's the newest member of the OMD family and it's the smallest OMD. It starts with the OMD EM5, um, I think two years or three years ago. And last year we came out with the EM1, that's a professional OMD. It's water res uh, resistant, uh, dust proofed. Um, it has a portrait grip and lots of um, accessories. Um, so this is the, the real pro camera and the EM1 has the sensor with the face detection out of focus field. So the out of focus is a little bit faster than the uh, EM5 and the EM10. EM5 and EM10 both have the same sensor. So they have um, only the contrast out of focus sensor. And for sure it's a micro for third sensor. Um, and um, yes, one very nice new thing which came out also with the OMD EM10, that's the new pancake lens. Um, this is a real small lens, I like this one very much. It's a motor zoom lens. Um, it goes from 14 to 42 millimeter focal lengths. Um, yeah, and it's light white, it's small. Um, I like this one very much um, and I think it's a real good deal to, to come out with this lens because the EM10 is a camera which goes for the intermediate, for the beginners. So it's not a pro camera but it's a real nice intermediate and beginner camera even if there's a lot of stuff also for the pros inside the camera. So it's not only a camera where you can only take um, in program mode or in scene mode, you have all the manual options here. You have manual focus, manual settings of, um, of aperture and shutter speed. So there's everything inside and you have a real big setup menu or individual menu um, where you can make um, very uh, individual settings of the camera. So yes, it's also a camera for the pros. Maybe you have an EM1 and want to have a smaller one for all day. Um, so the EM10 is really, really a good choice also as uh, a second camera to the EM1. Today I want to go a little bit more in deep uh, or in depth of the uh, menus of the options you have in the camera um, and so I will give you a little bit more information about the possibilities you have um, about the focus methods, um, about different settings, uh, picture settings, scene mode, art filters and stuff like this. So. Um, Yes, I go a little bit more deep inside of the OMD EM10. Okay, so let's start with the with the info display. Oh no, first of all, we have to go because I first I made the uh, German video. We have to go to the English setting. Okay, here we are. That's the English setting. When you press the OK button in the menu, you will see this quick menu or the mega menu and this one is a touch screen menu. If you press the info button, you will come back to the normal quick menu and if you press the info button again, you can toggle between these menus. First, when you use the camera, you may see that the mega menu, the touch screen menu, is not available. And there's a simple reason, because you have to go to the menu and you have to go to the point custom menu. And in the custom menu, there are a lot of settings you can make. And one of the settings is in the display menu the point control settings and in the control setting you have four different points E Auto, PAS, M Art and Scene and in each menu point you should check all the three options here 
see here you have only two options but in the next one again you have three options and here in the scene mode you also have three options. The reason why you have two or three options I show you if you are in the P mode you have two options you have this one and this one if you are in the art filters let's go to the art filters you have three options if you press the OK button you have the normal you have the normal uh, menu for the art filters press the info button you have the standard quick menu and press it again and you have the mega menu so these are the differences between the why you have two or three um, um, options because in the uh, art filter and in the scene mode if you go to the scene mode you have exactly the same you have the three different display types number one press the info button yeah and that's one thing I don't know why this happens it's it's all the time you have to change uh, to have to change sometimes again and then we have the mega menu we have the normal and we have the standard. I don't know why this happens but sometimes it happens that when you change directly from program to program the, uh, the, the different display types won't work directly so you have to change it one more time but you see we have the different settings. One next point in the uh, go back to P one next point in the um, custom settings is I show you now before I go a little bit deeper in the custom settings later on uh, in the custom settings also in the display section you have the different info settings um, so in the info settings you can choose between the different settings for the live info live view and here we have the different grid settings what happens is if you press the info button you will see you have the histogram you have only a few infos you have no infos and you have the 3d level meter and so are each time you press the info button you get a different display and that's what you can can uh, set up in the menu if you only want um, maybe the 3d level meter and uh, the the uh, um, standard display um, you can set it here in the display info setting here we are and here you have the options where you can set up the different settings okay so uh, let's go to the autofocus settings if you press the ok button and info button again you have here the autofocus settings you see we have the complete autofocus field I have to go to the to the um, autofocus I'm on manual focus I have to change this to single autofocus here yeah, I'm single autofocus and now press the field and now you have all the yeah I go to the uh, eye sensor here that's the reason why it changed now we have all the fields and here you see info if you press info you can change the amount of autofocus fields just by pressing the down button and the up button you see we have one autofocus field we have one small autofocus field and we have nine and now you can move if the if the touch screen is on you see my touch screen is not on and now you can move the autofocus fields you see here we have to to activate this one and now here we are you can move the um, autofocus field on any position you want here we have the magnification if you tip on the screen and press the magnification we see we have the five time just go to the um, point here up to 14 times press the magnification and you see we have the highest magnification 
This one works also in the manual mode. If you are in the manual mode, just go to the manual mode here. Manual focusing is here. We go to manual focusing and that's exactly the same. I will give you a little, a little, um, a little scene here so you can check out this. If I turn the front dial, the camera goes directly in the magnification mode and you see we have the 14 time magnification. If you want less, just turn the dial here on the camera and you see we go down to 5 times, 7 times, 10 times or 14 times zoom in the magnification mode. If your camera doesn't go directly in the magnification mode, there are two options. First option, just tip on the screen and you have the scale here at the side where you can put the magnification manually and then press the magnification symbol and you're in the magnification. That's the one way or the other way. You should change it in the custom menu and here we have the setting MF Assist. Here we are, MF Assist, and you should turn the MS, MF, MF Assist, the Magnify, to on. And then you have the option that when you turn the um, focus ring in the camera, the camera directly goes in the magnification. And also you can start the focus peaking. And what happens in the focus peaking, you see there are white rims or black rims around the around the, um, the um, contrast areas. It's not a very good example here because it's a printed card and so you have uh, lots of point where the camera get in focus and so you have lots of white uh, rims around the, um, around the sharp uh, um, contrast areas. Um, to set the um, to set the uh, peaking function, you have the point here. You have to go down a little bit. It's a, I think it's a little bit. Um, I don't know why they why they put didn't put the the uh, peaking functions here. We are in the peaking functions. They put this one in display. The peaking functions in display and the. MF assist they put in out of focus on manual focus. That's, I, I think it would be better to put both points together because if you use the MF assist you always use the peaking, not always, but in, in the most times you'll use the peaking function and I think it's a little bit difficult to find it here in the uh, display settings. But here we are, here are the peaking settings and you have the chance to, uh, they have you have the choice between black and white so these are the different settings in manual focus and in outer focus in outer focus you have the single outer focus the continuous outer focus the manual outer focus and the option of the combination single outer focus plus manual focus and you have the AF tracking where the uh, camera try to catch in a moving subject and try to catch in the uh, autofocus. Um, when you are in the different uh, autofocus settings, there's one point in the menu which you should obey. That's the point. Let's go down here. That's the point release priority in S and release priority in C. So what does it mean release priority? Usually the camera tries to focus on the point and when it's sharp, the autofocus has worked perfect, the camera release. That's what we want to have. But there are some um, some uh, scenes where it's very difficult for the camera to hit the autofocus perfect. And so there you have the choice that you can say, okay, the camera sh um, must release also if the autofocus doesn't, um, um, doesn't go absolutely perfectly on the point. I want the picture even if it's not 
perfect sharp and even if the uh, autofocus doesn't work perfect and so that's the point here the release priority in S that uh, that's uh, the single autofocus and the release priority in continuous autofocus and exactly the setting we have here that's the uh, suggestion I would make if you are in single autofocus usually you make portraits or you make landscape or you make um, uh, subjects which are not moving you make still photography and in this case the camera in my opinion should um, hit the autofocus perfect and so I want that the camera releases only if the autofocus is perfect in continuous shooting, usually you have subjects which are moving fast. You maybe uh, maybe take pictures of sport, running dogs, running kids, or stuff like that. Um, action photography, and in case of action photography, for me it's much more important that I get the picture. Um, I want to get the picture, and even if it's not perfect sharp or if the sharpness is not on the right spot of the picture doesn't matter I want to have the picture and so in this case I want the release priority and set the release priority to on so the camera releases even if the picture is not perfect sharp here we have the different settings of the um, of the um, uh, one frame two frames per second or three and a half frames per second for the um, low speed and here we have the settings for the high speed it goes up to eight frames per second okay so let's go back to the different camera settings or the important camera settings you can make one point is the dial here on top and with this dial on top you can set up the high tone and the uh, deep tone setting individually so if you press the button you will see the curve here in the in the um, on the display and you can set up the shadow with the one dial and you can set up the highlight with the other dial so you can make the curve you can fit the curve perfect to your needs and to your scene you take um, if you want to go back just press the button here press a little bit longer OK and you're back on the straight line but there's another function here which you can choose from if you press the button a little bit longer and turn the dial you see we have the highlight shadow control that's what we've done uh, now and you have the color creator and the color creator is a real nice function if you press the button now again you're in the color creator and in the color creator you have the option to change the color in two directions the one direction oops press again sorry the one direction is the intensity you can down to the middle point and then it's black and white or you can make a little bit toning you have a light tone here or you can give lots of color with it three plus so that's real uh, deep colorization and the next point is you can make the tone you see we have the different tonings here and so you can change the tone so maybe you want to make a nice sunset just give a little bit more color like we with one plus and then go to the orange and you see in this uh, in in this setting um, we would get a real nice orange colorful sunset um, and so you can you can individualize the color setting very easy and very fast and here we are if you want to go back just press the OK button a little bit longer and you're back to the normal setting so this is the this is oops sorry press again this is the color creator you can change between the color creator and highlight uh, and shadow tone just by pressing the button here and turn the dial and turn the dial and you have the color creator and highlight shadow control um, and that's it okay so these are the different settings here
Next point, or one important point, uh, which um, not everybody knows, is if you're in the art filters, you can individualize the art filters. So we see here the different art filters. You can use your touch finger. You can, uh, sorry, you can use it uh, with a touch screen here. Um, and if you are in the different in the different art filters you see here is a small sign which says go to the right button and you have different settings and that's what we want to do if we go to the right button you have here different settings and you will see the difference between these in this case in this filter type there are only two um, if you go to like um, let's go to cross process here we have also only two different settings um, but here we have more setting pinhole effect and so on and so on. Um, so yes, there are some um, options where you can individualize the different art filters. So you should have a look here um, for the different settings and there are some real nice settings here. You see there's, there are not so many settings in, the, um, in this one, but there are different settings. Um, one point, we have the art filter bracketing. That's the last point here. That's the art bracketing. Oops, sorry. Um, that's the art bracketing. And in the art bracketing, you have the option to um, make a bracketing like the normal auto exposure bracketing. But in the art bracketing, um, the camera take one picture and um, um, for each filter you have chosen, it makes uh, the camera saves another picture on the SD card. So you have, let's see how many art filters we have. We have, um, we have uh, 12 art filters. So at the maximum you get one picture, that's the normal picture, and 12 additional pictures with the different art filter settings. And that's the point here. When we go to the menu, we have here in the menu 2 the bracketing function, bracketing, and in the bracketing function, when we say, say on, you have the AE, auto exposure bracketing, white bracketing, flash bracketing, ISO bracketing, and art filter bracketing. <laughs> I can't set the art filter bracketing because I'm in the art filter, so I have to go out of the art filter now and go to the function P and now in P we have the bracketing here on and art filter bracketing and here I can say okay I want the art bracketing now the camera makes one picture uh, in the normal mode and additional pictures in the art filters I have chosen you cannot combine the different bracketing filters. So you have uh, the different bracketing options. So you can only choose one bracketing option. So if you have chosen the auto exposure bracketing option, there's no way to uh, choose also the auto exposure bracketing and the art filter bracketing. No, you have only one choice which you can use. Okay, so these were the uh, bracketing um, functions. You have the HDR um, settings, uh, time-lapse setting, that's a nice feature. So if you want to make a time-lapse, um, you can here set the uh, time-lapse, how many frames you want to make, start and uh, interval time. And you can say that you want to make a time-lapse movie, so you don't, have to com you don't have to combine the single pictures, but the camera makes a time-lapse movie, so the result is a movie. That's a little bit easier, so you don't have to combine all the different pictures. Okay, so if you're in the scene mode, um, and go to the scene mode, um, you see there's also a small arrow and you may think you can individualize the different um, the different uh, scene programs but now if you press the right button there are only some information about the uh, scene mode but you can't individualize the scene mode. But you have another point which you can individualize and that's if you go to I auto. 
if you go to iAuto you see there is a small arrow here at the side and if you press this one you get different settings here it starts from the color saturation goes to the color image and oops sorry back again and goes to the brightness blur background um, express motions and that's it so if you want to change one of these points just hit it and you get a slider here yes I hope so if you press OK sorry you have to press OK you get a slider and here you can change between clear and vivid so that's very easy to change between the different settings you can um, then you can say OK and if you want to make another setting just press the menu go again in the slider and make the next point oops make the next point maybe change the color image say OK move the slider here and you have the different setting here say OK go back to the menu start the slider here or pop up the slider again I uh, have a little bit big fingers and here you have the brightness say OK and you can change the brightness so you can make the different settings in the auto function and you can individualize the um, color brightness and stuff like this so that's also a real nice um, feature next point here is the uh, it's a this one it's um, it's a composing function I would say you see we have here the uh, option to make different composings you have different frame orders um, and if you like this one here you have here also the option to individualize this one you see we have here different different uh, settings so if you want this one say OK OK and that's it and then we have the frame here now you can make the first picture here and then you have the second picture here a little bit more far away and real close up like this and it's too close and here we are and you say OK and that's the result if you press the replay button you see here's the res oops sorry if you press the replay button here's the result so that's also a real nice feature at the EM10 um, it's a composing feature I would say it's composing <clears throat> okay so let's go back to P and let's have a look at the custom menu um, one thing I should have mentioned that's the um, that's the uh, shadow release by just pr tipping on the on the screen so that's the touch shutter just press your finger at the point you want to have it the only thing you have to look for is that this one here is at the right position and that's the right one you should use in the next one this one the touch screen is off and in this I showed you before you can move the focus point on the screen okay so let's have a look at the menu we go to the custom menu because this one is the biggest menu here you have the most options um, and um, you may get lost but um, you have some real nice options uh, AF mode that's what I said before here you have the different AF mode settings um, you see there are, there are um, some of the settings in the menu are in the quick menu so you don't have to go all the time in this custom menu you have here and that's the point you have this quick menu where you have like 15 or 20 settings directly without going into the menu you have to go you have not you must not go here in the in the um, deep menu okay so my finger always hits the eye detection 
Okay, so we have the uh, bulb time settings, we have the focus ring, manual focus assist, I said before. Um, you have uh, face priority. In the face priority, that's a real nice function because in the face priority, you can set up if you want to uh, focus on the right eye or on the left eye. You see, we have the face detection here. Um, on the eyes um, and at the right side of the eye or at the left side. So that's a real nice feature. You have the different settings here. Then we have the button functions. You can set up the different button, f uh, the different functions of the um, of the FN1, FN2, and the movie button here on top. Um, you have the dial functions where you can say, okay, when I'm in the manual mode, I want the shutter on the front dial or want the shutter on the back dial and the F stop on the front or back dial. That's the uh, dial function for the different settings and the dial direction. So that's important for photographers who came from Canon or Nikon. Um, here you can change the direction because they have uh, wise, they work vice versa. And so you can set up the uh, uh, EM10 in a way you know this. That's what I said before, uh, release priority for S and N, the different, um, different speeds here, um, HDMI, video audio control and info settings I showed you, display grid here you can, um, here you can uh, activate uh, display grid for different options, picture mode settings, histogram settings. Yeah, and here you see you have the different uh, different uh, display. You have the peaking setting here, um, sleep time, power off, auto power off, USB mode, um, um, uh, the, um, the steps. You can make a third uh, f-stop or a full f-stop, noise filters, ISO setting and we have the uh, ISO auto setting. Um, one question which comes um, not all the time but which come very often, do I have an um, um, exposure time a limit, an exposure time limit in the ISO setting? No, I don't have. You only have the minimum and the maximum ISO setting. You don't have an, uh, you don't have an exposure time which you can set up um, and at this limit the camera goes up in the next ISO setting so you only have the high limit and the default value. Um, you can say which program should use ISO auto metering. Bulb timer. Bulb timer is a real nice function because uh, in the bulb timer, in the live bulb, you have the option that you can set up the camera and start the um, bulb function and the camera um, takes, the, uh, takes the picture and in a, in a um, certain interval you see on the screen how the picture grows and gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and when the picture is at the point where you are satisfied and you say okay that's um, bright enough and that's the perfect um, the perfect um, situation now you can stop the bulb and um, you have the the picture um, which you have taken in exactly the way you have seen it on the display. So that's a real nice function. That's the li live bulb. Oops, live bulb. How you use it? Um, very easy. You have to go to the manual mode here, and if you are in the manual mode. Um, just turn the dial here down to, now we go up to 30 seconds and, oh 60 seconds, sorry, and then we have here, it's a little bit dark, we have here the uh, live bulb and um, you, the difference between live bulb and lifetime is a uh, live bulb you have to press the finger uh, on the shutter release um, and you lose the finger at the end of your exposure time and the um, lifetime as you press it once and it starts to expose and you press it twice and it stops to expose. So that's a difference between live uh, bulb and lifetime. You can choose what you want, doesn't matter. Um, okay, so now let's go up uh, here for a better picture quality and go to P. Okay, so let's go back to the custom menu. 
we have been here at the exposure time auto ISO and we have showed you the lifetime and the life bulb uh, X-Sync for the flash um, the different resolution settings we have here then we have the different color space Adobe RGB or uh, R RGB um, we have the different settings for raw and JPEG file name uh, copyright video mode we have the different video modes movie effects wind noise reduction here we are in the movie section oops sorry well that's a little bit confusing let's go down to the movie section and after the movie section we have the options for the built-in electronic viewfinder you have the different settings here you can also put in a grid inside the electronic viewfinder uh, pixel, map, pips, pixel mapping, warning level for the battery, touchscreen settings. Yes, and here we are back to the uh, beginning of the individual menu. So you see the um, menu is a real, the custom menu has real lots of points. Um, I think you should go to the to the uh, menu and have a look there if there are functions you're interested in try them change the setting but don't get lost you can get lost in this menu and um, if you make the wrong setting um, it could happen that you um, spoil your pictures so be a little bit careful but go into the menu have a look there one point I will show you because they are made Olympus a lot of improvement that's the Wi-Fi function here we have the Wi-Fi symbol and if we press the Wi-Fi symbol it takes a second and the display shows a QR code you just can take a picture of the QR code and um, you can um, set the smartphone or the uh, in this case an iPhone with the um, EM10. I've done this before so I only have to use the EM10 uh, yeah, EM10 here and now they connect to each other and then I go to the Olympus app and here we are and now this is in German it's very difficult to change it in in English so um, I have to to translate it Fernbedienung means remote control uh, photos import is uh, almost the same and uh, photo bearbeiten means photo retouch so they have you have the option to retouch to retouch the photos and here we have geotech so you can um, put the GPS position to the photos one very important or nice feature is the remote control so if I put my finger on the remote control here we are you see you see you see I don't know why um, sometimes it's not stable we have to connect again yes here we are I move the picture a little bit away and hold the camera here now um, away and you see I move the camera the picture is moving and I can change the program mode here we have the P and I go to M and if I am M I can set up the ex exposure time and I can set up the f-stop I can set up the ISO setting and for sure I can shutter release the picture here and make a picture yes here we are and make a picture and you have also you have also the touch release here you can put your finger on the screen and make a touch release it's now overexposed because I'm in M mode and I didn't lo look uh, you can also use the art filters here we have the different art filter settings so I can use the maybe the black and white black and white setting and hit the button and that's it so you have a lot of options and that's what I like really you have a lot of options in the new 
um, Olympus app, you can change a lot of things in the in the Olympus app. Um, in my opinion, it's the second best after um, Panasonic because Panasonic also has a real, real good um, has a real good um, uh, remote control and has a real good. Um, Wi-Fi connection to the smartphone um, and so Olympus does a lot of improvement with their app and um, in my opinion it's um, yeah they, they, they did a real good job especially I like that you can change between the different program modes PASM you can choose also the art filters and that's one point I like very much um, in with the remote control yes okay so this uh, was the overview of the different um, menu settings. Um, as I said, there are a lot of points you can choose from. Work a little bit with these different points, work with the different out of focus settings. And um, yeah, it's always the same. Work with your camera, learn your camera as better you learn to work with your camera as better the pictures get because in a certain scene you don't have to think about what to do, you know exactly what to do. So learn, work with your camera and that's the best guarantee for getting real, real good pictures. Okay, so this was my tips and tricks section about the Olympus OMD EM10. I hope you enjoyed it a little bit. I hope it helped you a little bit to understand the camera and work a little bit better, better with the um, Olympus. If you liked it, yes, give me a like, leave a comment, friendly comments are welcome. And um, yeah, come on my YouTube channel back. I have um, some more videos coming up in the next days. Um, and so it's always interesting to um, stay here on uh, the channel of Ralf Fotobude. Thank you for watching my video. Have some fun taking pictures and as always I say bye bye and moin moin.